Begin Podfix Network transmission. In three, two, one. Fly fishing in a stream, getting those ankles wet. Or deep in the ocean, casting nets. Fish nerds. Fish nerds. Fish nerds. It's a podcast. Hello and welcome to the Fish Nerds, a show about fish, fishing and eating fish. Happy National Podcast Posting Month. We're getting there. We're so close. Seven more to go. And we will be done with November, putting this month to bed. You can still get your voice on the show. Just pick up your phone, record yourself, get your, give me a fishing tip, and email it to clay at fishnerds.com. Now, John King, the crappie hippie, and Tim Tacklebox Beat. Both run the Lure Love podcast. Both are Fish Nerds correspondents. Both are great humans, and I love them both very much. Thank you for putting this together. Uh, the Lure Love podcast is put together a little bit for you on cold water fishing, and this also is a great sample of what you can expect from the Lure Love Lure. I can't say it, but I love it. The Lure Love podcast. So, without further ado, here we go. Crappy hippie, you need to slow down. Got one. I am fishing slow, man. That was a bump. No, I mean slow. Like this? If you were trying to fend off a wasp, that might work. But seriously, pod bro, I mean slow. There's another one. Like that. Shake and bake, baby. Shake and bake. Nice slap, Tim. Oops, I just got to strike my side. Gosh darn it, I got my foot in a bucket and a skunk climbing up my back. Somebody help me here. Crappy hippie. Crappy hippie. Come down and gaze into the lights on the LED panel. That's it. Breathe slowly. The time expenditure of your movements is becoming fractionalized. Huh? Wh what? Oh. Well, while Lucy tries to get crappy hippie into a headspace where he might catch a fish, let me give you a vital winter fishing tip in a word. Slow. Whether it's through the ice or open water, in a boat or on the shore, slow-moving baits almost always outperform faster-moving lures when water temps dip below 45 degrees. One of the most maddening qualities of many game and panfish in the winter is that they want a bait to move, but at a pace that can cause nervous frustration. Dead sticking is a tried-and-true technique, but there are times when that bait has to move. In vertical fishing, there's a lot of jigging and jiggling to a stationary bug. And while that may be movement of a kind, there simply are times when the lure needs to be traveling from point A to point B, no matter how slow. Slow. I am slow. For example, using a lipless crank, make a game out of how slow you can make it run. Swim jig for bass? Long pauses, low lifts, and slow swims. Blade bait? Let it fall to the bottom and lay there every now and then. Crappy jig? Raise it so slow it takes 10 to 20 times what it usually takes to bring in a retrieve. It's like what my mentors used to tell me about winter fishing when I was a young angler. Fish as slow as you can stand and then slow down some more. Also remember that fish in the winter have a tendency to strike softly and blow bait out quickly, so one must stay alert. Cold water fishing can be extremely challenging at times it appears. Oh yes, Lucy. Slow fishing may get maddening for some, but it works. Oh, there you go. Shake and bake, baby. Crappy all day. I think Crappy Hippie is ready. He's just sitting there staring. No, he is actually moving. Note the position of the real handle. He is actually causing his jig to climb at a rate of one centimeter every 10 seconds. It's like he's made out of stone. Crappy hippie, are you in there? Mm. Note how he has the index finger of his rod hand touching the line. That not only will help detect strikes, but just the micro movements from breathing and shifting his body weight will actually impart a very subtle but very effective action to the jig he is using. These movements are easily registered in the eyes and lateral line of the fish. Now I want to get my line back in the water. I'm glad you're enjoying the motorized fishing arm I made for you. It is a wonderful feature. Presently, I am fishing without hooks to register strike data. Maybe one day I will accept the modification so I can hook, catch, clean and serve the fish, but right now the existing hardware is more than ample. Oops, there was one. Although I'm enjoying the peace and quiet, 
particularly the absence of John's occasional streams of profanity, I have to ask if he is always going to be in a semi-comatose state like this. He is simply in a hypnotic trance. He will snap out of it just as soon as... Heck yeah! My train just pulled into Slabville! Way to go, shake and bake, baby! Nice job, crappy hippie. Well, thank you all, but when it comes down to fishing, it's the pattern. And if one must fish in the wintertime, one must fish slowly by having the discipline to rise to the occasion. It's like I said, fish ultra slow in the cold. It's the best method. Why, I remember one time fishing so slow. A bird landed on me, pooped on my shoulder, and flew away, and I didn't even flinch. I'm the paragon of Zen transcendence and bodily control. I mean, if someone were to write a book about patience and the virtues of chill fishing, I would have a whole chapter to myself and a note in the foreword. Tim, your eyes have rolled back so far they're stuck. I know. Just give me a second. Oh, heck, I missed a strike. Well, that popped them free at least. Perhaps it is time for us to end this tip on winter fishing. Definitely. I am slipping into my noise-canceling earmuffs for the rest of the day. And he said, you mean slow like molasses? And I said, molasses be speedy Gonzalez compared to my other worldly nerve control. I am the anti-spaz, the god of viscosity, a Michelangelo's David made from living marmal, but with pants on and a fishing rod in my hand. Well, I bet I could fish so slow, I'd only have 10 retreats between sunup and sundown. Here's what I'm talking about.